cruelty. Swine flu, bird flu, all these um, really aren't inherent in, in, they're not inherent in pigs. Pigs actually are one of the cleanest animals on the planet if given a choice. This idea that um, with our meals we cause this suffering um, and create this destruction, is, is, it's this, like a ceremony that we carry into every aspect of our life. Are we going to cer- celebrate life or are we going to celebrate death and destruction? And that's really the choice. This is the Stop Animal Cruelty series on Supreme Master Television. Our focus today is the link between factory farmed pigs who are treated in a barbarous manner and the emergence of the swine flu epidemic. On May 18, 2009, at the 62nd World Health Assembly held in Geneva, Switzerland, the World Health Organization nearly raised the pandemic alert level to six and stated that if cases continued to spread rapidly outside the Americas, this highest alert level signaling a global pandemic might be declared. Since then, the number of victims has been climbing in Europe, Australia, and Asia. The world of today is more vulnerable to the adverse effects of an influenza pandemic than it was in 1968, when the last pandemic of the previous century began. The speed and volume of international travel have increased to an astonishing degree. As we are seeing right now with H1N1, any city with an international airport is at risk of an imported case. These vulnerabilities to imported cases, to disrupted economies and businesses affect all countries. The transport of pigs during the meat production process also increases their exposure to other pigs, humans and birds and thus increases the chance for new strains of viruses to combine and thus enable swine flu to become even more virulent. These abused and tortured pigs that are being raised for meat have extremely weak immune systems due to being fed an improper and unwholesome diet, being given little to no freedom of movement, and being subjected to non-stop high levels of stress. Thus, Viruses thrive as these animals have little resistance to illness. As the animals are kept mostly in dark conditions, viruses can replicate quickly because sunlight, which possesses UV rays which can neutralize viruses, is simply not present. According to the Centers for Disease Control in the United States, 51% of pigs tested in the north central region of the United States were determined to have been infected with the H1N1 virus at some point during their lives. Moreover, as Robert P. Martin, former executive director of the Pew Commission on Industrial Farm Animal Production explains, massive overuse of antibiotics by farmers to try and stem illnesses in the animals only makes things worse. The routine use of antibiotics uh, is what allows these animals to be um, housed together uh, and uh, overcrowded in these kind of filthy conditions where they where they live standing over their own waste. It suppresses the bacterial infections, but 
that also allows for the environment to be in place for the uh, rapid evolution or mutation of uh, viruses. Um, and, then, and then another really serious concern we had is that there's just not enough monitoring of uh, workers in these industrial farms. Yeah, mm-hmm. We really decided that given the structure of these industrial operations and the fact that the workers aren't being tested, that a viral outbreak, a uh, flu epidemic like we've seen was really a matter of when and not if. But I hope that uh, people start looking in this country at really how we produce food because it's the system itself that is the problem. And, you know, it's not the animals in the system. It's the way we raise the animals that are the problem. More than two months after the first documented human case of swine flu, more than 20,000 confirmed cases of the disease have been reported in 69 countries. There have been over 125 deaths due to the virus. Experts say many more swine flu infections have gone unidentified across the world. In a May 2009 article written for Newsweek, a respected U.S. news magazine, Lori Garrett, Senior Fellow for Global Health at the Council on Foreign Relations, a U.S.-based foreign policy think tank, well summarized the factory farm tie to the swine flu epidemic by stating, It is a strange world wherein billions of animals are concentrated into tiny spaces. Breeding stock is flown to production sites all over the world and poorly paid migrant workers are exposed to infected animals. This is the ecology that in the cases of pigs and chickens is breeding influenza. It is an ecology that promotes viral evolution and if we don't do something about it, this ecology will one day spawn a severe pandemic that will dwarf that of 1918. Today, experts fear that the full impact of the swine flu has yet to be seen. The current virus could mutate into a much deadlier form and re-emerge with greater force in subsequent waves. The results of these infections could eventually resemble or even be worse than the 1918 flu pandemic that claimed 100 million lives. The shutting of factory farms, whether they raise pigs or any other animal, should be the first order of business if we are to be truly serious about safeguarding the public health. Aside from the diseases they propagate, Factory farms are simply places of inhumanity where billions of our animal friends have their lives horrifically ended each year. So please, adopt a healthy, organic, vegan, meaning plant-based diet and help prevent untold human and animal suffering. We send our condolences to those who have lost loved ones to swine flu and our thoughts are with those currently suffering from this dreadful infection. We look forward soon to a better time when all beings coexist on earth in health and harmony. Thank you for joining us today on Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. Coming up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May all animals be given our full respect and love. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash stop dash animal dash cruelty.